the month of March, on Sunday mornings, we are going to consider the concept of unity. Four different thoughts that relate to unity. This morning, we're going to think about the very basic, in fact, it is the key to unity, and that is submission. Now, I grew up in North Florida in the Panhandle, and when I was a kid, wrestling on television was a big deal, local television wrestling. I look back on it now and I think, why in the world did I ever watch that ridiculous stuff? It's not anything like the MMA stuff. It's not anything like high school or college wrestling. It was just a big show, that's all it was, and I get it. And the personalities were the thing, not the action or the wrestling itself. But I've come to understand through various sources the concept of wrestling as it relates to uh, what's really happening with the concept of submission. Now, I'm not a big fan of any of it even today, but I know many who are. And in that, they look for the idea that in the midst of that wrestling moment, whatever it is, the fighting moment, is the time of submission. When one can put the other in a hold, whereas the other one will tap out and say, that's it, I give up, I submit. That's not the kind of submission that God is talking about. That's not at all it. Now granted, it ends up in the same place. The one dominates the other and makes that one give in. But in the Bible, when God speaks about submission, he's talking about me dominating myself and giving in. Submission is the key to unity. In a congregation of people in an organization of any sort, the unity that exists will be founded on the fact that all who are apart willingly submit to what the group is doing, to what the mentality is, and in order to be apart, I dominate myself and I say, I will Submit. Submission is the key to all relationships. Notice it is the key to my relationship with God. During creation week, the concept of submission, the foundation of submission was constructed during that week. Because at the end of the week, God looked at the people whom he created, Adam and Eve, and he said that they should have dominion over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. That's putting his creation in submission. But he also said in chapter 2, verses 15 to 17, that he put Adam in that garden and told him to tend and to keep it. So the idea of being in dominion, the idea of placing that creation in submission also means that Adam and Eve were in submission to God in order to have that relationship with him. They had a relationship in which in the garden they walked and talked together. But when they disrupted that submission, when they let themselves get out of control, that relationship was broken. And that relationship, therefore being broken, 
ended in the way that it was because submission is the key to unity. And what he constructed in the foundation in that creation week continues to be true because Jesus said the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Matthew 22 and 37. It is the key to the foundation of a relationship with Jesus. Number two, it is the foundation for relationships with everyone else. Ephesians 5 and 21, Paul wrote saying, submitting to one another in the fear of God. We are to be submissive to one another. 1 Peter 5 and verse 5, be clothed with, it, with humility and be submissive to one another. And in Matthew 22 and 37, or 38, Jesus followed up that great commandment with the second one. And he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. The relationships we have with each other are founded on the concept of submission. And the relationship we have with government, Romans 13, 1, is also founded on submission. Be subject to the governing authorities, for the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Be subject, be submissive. So see, Submission is the foundation of all of our relationships. Let's draw this now into the context of the spiritual family. Submission is the foundation of the universal relationship we have with Jesus Christ. It is submission that makes us one with Jesus. We are one with him because we are submissive to him. Though we be many are one body in Christ. Romans 12 and verse 5. We partake of the one bread. We are all one body. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 17. Though we being many are one body in Christ, and as the body has many members, so also is Christ. 1 Corinthians 12 and 12. And then he said to those in Galatians chapter 3 who needed to hear and be reminded of what they had done. When he said, As many of us as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is the submission. Baptized into Christ. What is the effect? There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. When we put on Christ, it is our submission that makes us one in Jesus. And anyone who wants to rebel at the words of Jesus, who said, He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Anyone who rebels at that teaching of Jesus is not being submissive and therefore is not going to be one and have a relationship with him. But number two, when we have, by submission, that relationship, it is submission that maintains that oneness. Paul said to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 1 in verse 10, I beseech your brethren that you all be like-minded. Like-minded, having the same mind and the same judgment, that you all speak the same things. Since we have a oneness, in Jesus, we should all speak the same thing, maintaining that oneness in 
Jesus. So submission is the foundation of relationships that we form. Submission is the foundation of the oneness, the unity we have universally in Jesus. Now let's bring it home to Richmond, Kentucky. Submission is the foundation of our unity congregationally. I want you to look at the text that was read in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17. And I want us to understand what is happening here. The text is very clear. Obey those who have the rule over you, submitting to them, or be submissive. Now, we could spend quite a bit of time analyzing and understanding why it refers to a particular group which we understand to be shepherds, elders, pastors, who all have the qualifications that we have surmised and agreed with in 1 Timothy 3 and in Titus 1 to be appointed to this place. And I think he is here speaking about those men who, to whom we should be submissive. Now, notice what he is saying. Number one, these men must be submissive men. They have a job as well. Look at this verse. For they watch out for your souls. The primary function of the men who lead in this capacity is to watch for the souls of those who agree to be submissive to them. Amen. They're not watching out for souls who don't agree to this submission policy. People who are somewhere else. They just can't be saddled with that. What creates this unity congregationally? It is, number one, those men who choose to live this way to serve this function and watch out for their souls. And then, number two, they who must give account. What? You might ask yourself, why would any man choose to do that? That's a tough responsibility. Apparently, God is going to ask them about how they have watched out for the souls of those who have submitted to them. Apparently, they're going to be called and saying, did you do your job? Number two, they have a commission to which they must be submissive. We have a commission to which we must be submissive. And it goes hand in hand with their commission. Obey and be submissive. You see, submissiveness is the attitude that leads to obedience. The attitude that says, okay, Lord, whatever you want to do, that's what I will do. It leads to obedience. When a person says, I am submissive, but then says, well, now, I I'm not going to do that. Well, you're not submissive. The text says, obey, being submissive. The submissive attitude necessarily leads to obedience, which produces unity. Listen to what it says. 
Let them, those men, do this, watch for your souls and give account with joy and not with grief. Create the environment in which you are submissive in a way that aids them fulfilling their commission joyfully. Because if you don't, and you cause them grief, you have to answer for that the same way that they answer when they don't do their jobs. And that creates disunity. Now let's be very practical congregationally. The men who serve like this don't have the right to change the Word of God. Amen. So their authority to rule has nothing to do with deciding what God says is right and wrong. That's already been decided. Here is where they rule. This only makes sense. They rule in how we are going to do what God says to do. In other words, they rule in matters of opinion. That only makes sense because we have 400 opinions. And if we operated on 400 opinions, we would not operate. Can't do it. Get a team of surgeons in a room. And let them all decide on their own what they're going to do. I don't want to be the patient. Do you? But put a team of surgeons together under the rule of one who's going to make the decision. I like that. Because that puts all of the wisdom together and then they do something that is profitable. I think God is telling us, church, that the responsibility these men have plays out practically as they rule in the how and the when and the why. And we are under obligation to be submissive because that's unity. But when you and I run off on our own, doing our own thing, regardless of what anybody else thinks, and outside the purview of those men who watch for the unity of this church, we are creating disunity, not unity. Amen. And unity doesn't mean that we all think exactly alike. It doesn't mean that we all feel the same thing. It doesn't even matter if we all believe everything exactly alike. But i tell you what it does mean. It does mean that we are all together moving forward with the combined wisdom of those men to whom we have chosen to be submissive to lead us in this work. In a few minutes, you're going to hear the work set before us. I hope that you will find your place, get involved, be on board, and let's move forward with the power of unity. Today, the attitude of submissiveness says to God, God, I appreciate what you did. I can't save myself. Tell me what to do. And anybody who comes before the Lord and says, Lord, just let me do what I need to do. Tell me what I need to do. If you have that mentality, the Lord will lead and guide your life. 
because his word helps to tell you what to do. And it begins with the submissive attitude that says, yes, I believe in Jesus. I accept his salvation. And I want to do what he said. I want to be immersed into him, to become one with him, to live in oneness with him. Today, can we baptize you into Jesus for the remission of your sins? Or can we help you live a oneness with Jesus that is proper and right? As always, we sing a song for your encouragement as we stand together.